This is your quick guide to fibrous versus globular proteins. This is one of the things that you need to know about for your A-level biology. So we'll start out with the fibrous proteins. Now fibrous proteins tend to have this long, thin structure, like we can see here. And the structure is very repetitive, like we can see here as well. Fibrous proteins will often form these fibers. And these form when we get lots of polypeptide chains lying parallel together. And then the interlinking forces between the amino acids which includes things like hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, and disulfide bridges, will start to form, and they'll hold this tertiary structure in place. Now, fibrous proteins are also insoluble, and because they have this long, stable structure, they tend to be used in structural roles. So examples of fibrous proteins would include things like collagen, which gives tensile strength to our connective tissue, keratin, which is found in our hair and our nails, and elastin, which is found in our tissues. Now globular proteins have this more rounded and compact shape, like we can see here, and they are soluble in water. Now they'll often contain both hydrophobic and hydrophilic groups, and their tertiary structure will fold in a way that the hydrophobic groups will tend to be pointing inwards, where they're protected, and the hydrophilic groups will be pointing outwards, where they can be exposed to water. This contributes to their solubility and makes them really useful for transport roles because they're able to dissolve into liquids like the blood. Globular proteins are also commonly used for biochemical roles and functional roles. So examples of globular proteins would include things like hemoglobin, which transports oxygen in the blood, enzymes like amylase, or hormones like insulin. So just to recap, fibrous proteins are longer, stronger, tend to be used for structural roles and they're insoluble. Globular proteins, more rounded and compact, tend to be used for functional roles and they are soluble. Now as an exam tip, if you ever get a question on these, always try to link the structure to the function. If you like this video, please give it a like, and if you like this kind of A-level biology content, then please follow the channel for more. Bye for now.